Jesus Christ heals you, rise and make your bed. And immediately he rose, and all the residents of Lydda and Sharon saw him, and they turned to the Lord. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days she became ill and died, and when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, Please come to us without delay. So Peter rose and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing uh, tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed, and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and raised her up. And calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And she stayed in Joppa for many days with, that was verse 43 years old, and she said, with one Simon and Tanner. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for its power. We pray this morning that we be alert from your word and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So, Peter reappears now. Oh, maybe see you. Peter reappears, and we haven't seen Peter uh, from uh, since Acts 8, uh, when he was doing ministry in, in Samaria. So he's back, and you know Peter is the, is the rock. Jesus calls him the rock. He's the cornerstone of the church, and uh, here he is doing, he's doing two miracles, and uh, it's interesting, you know, when we think about uh, this period of time, um, Peter is, you know, Jesus is no longer walking around, he's, he's gone to heaven, and this is a time of uh, anticipation, it was believed that Jesus was going to come back pretty fast in the second coming. Um, was was not given a time element, but most of the Christians at that time thought that the second coming would be soon. And so what happens in between the first coming and the second coming uh, is a time of grace, and a time when the Holy Spirit is active. So when Jesus went to heaven, the Holy Spirit came, and the Holy Spirit has the, uh, gives the disciples, those who believe in Jesus, uh, the power including the power to heal. So we see Peter living that out. And so as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about uh, you know, the time that we're in. So much news uh, right now is about the rising uh, number of COVID cases, right? So huge numbers, the, the, a spike. Uh, and, uh, but that uh, other news is the vaccine is on the way, right? So that's, that gives a lot of hope that, the, that uh, uh, Pfizer and another company have produced a vaccine that seems like it's more than 90% effective. And that's much more than was hoped for. And so uh, the question is, should we sit around and wait for the vaccine that we don't know when it's coming? Or should we, uh, you know, what should we do? And uh, it's a little bit like the second, you know, thinking about the second coming. And, and so we can learn from scripture, if we look at Matthew, uh, 2436 kind of gives us instructions about what to do when you're waiting for something, especially something important. So Matthew 24, uh, 36. And this is Jesus speaking uh, to his followers. He said, but concerning that day and hour, so he's talking about the second coming. No one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Uh, and it, it basically goes, it, that, so that's the scripture that says we don't know when the second coming is, is going to happen, but it's going to be a big, it gives us hope. We know the second coming will happen. Uh, and it gives us hope. And basically, and then Jesus talks about, after this, he gives a parable of the ten virgins, basically saying you shouldn't just wait, you should be ready. So when the when Jesus comes back, uh, you should be you should be prepared, and you should make your life uh, matter 
by, by living in the power of the Holy Spirit. So this is, in, in some ways, the, uh, you know, the we know that the vaccine is coming, right? But who's going to have priority? I know the professionals first, right? They should have priority, right? They're on the front lines. Uh, and then, uh, no, you know, and so people are kind of guess, right? Who's going to have priority? And then the next one would be people with, older people with special need, with medical conditions, right? So uh, someone, in uh, I think nursing homes, right? There was a lot of people in nursing homes that have, that have passed away, so that would be a priority. And then people kind of guess. And so you kind of say, well, not, you know, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm, I'm not that old, right? Uh, uh, but I think, I think the next priority should be college professors, right? Because they're, they're, they would be exposed to a lot. And then high school teachers. And so I think uh, teachers, educators should be you know, next in line because it's going to take a while to roll out. And so and there's a lot of speculation about you know, when, when, I, you know, when we will get vaccinated. And so um, I think you know, what do we do in the meantime? Uh, we shouldn't just we should try to predict or figure it out. We, but we need to live in relation with God and the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that's exactly what happens here in this passage: is that Peter is doing miracles in the name of Jesus during this time when the second coming is believed to be soon. And so, um, and so I called him in this title, the Miracle Man, because he's doing miracles just like Jesus did. Um, and so uh, it's interesting when you think about the miracle man, that's actually a comp a, a lot of people have called themselves the miracle man. And so um, when, when, I, when I looked it up, uh, uh, you guys know Mar Marvel comic, Comics? Right? Disney bought Marvel Comics. So in the 60s is when the Marvel comic series came out. And there were four, there were the Fantastic Four. You guys know that? I didn't really know this until I looked it up. Who were, were the Fantastic Four? Can you name them, Austin? Yeah. I mean, Ethan, Austin? Uh, Mr. Fantastic. Mr. Mr. Fantastic? Mr. Fantastic, yeah. Invisible Woman. Invisible Woman? Human Torch. Human Torch? The Thing? And The Thing, good job. Oh, extra credit. Did you, did you know that, Ethan? No? Did you know that, Brother Albert? I know the Brother Albert. Yeah, I know. So those are the, it's called the, uh, Fantastic Four. That was from the 60s, but I think they've had a revival, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Disney Disney bought the rights, I think, to Marvel Comics. Uh, but when I when I Googled this, it turns out that, that you know they interact with different figures. And so the Fantastic Four, they got their 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 powers because they were astronauts and they went into outer space and cosmic forces gave them gave them extra powers. Is that right? Yeah, we, it's, that's what it, that's what it says. Uh, and so, in, in an early rendition of the comic, uh, they go to a uh, stage show. A, a magician, remember I have shared before about Johnny East Palmer. So they they go to a magician, and his name is Miracle Man. So he becomes a character in Marvel Comics, named Miracle Man. And so uh, during his show, he's basically he. He tries to convince people of his of his power and uh, and his basically his ability to do miracles. And so, in the stage show, have, have you seen this Austin? This episode? This, I guess it would be a comic. I, I, I didn't get a chance to look it up on YouTube, but uh, basically during the stage show, Miracle Man sees the Fantastic Four there, and he taunts them. He basically he he, he says that. My powers are superior, and he tries to uh, show them. He, and he does things like levitation, so he can rise off the ground. Uh, he can transform himself into mist, you know, vapor, and he can make himself into a giant form. So he does all those things, but he's doing it to promote himself. So this is going to be a contrast to what we see today. And at one point, the, th the thing thing is, I guess, pretty big, right, Austin? So he, he enlarges, um, uh, he grips he the thing on stage and tries to have a contest of strength to say, I'm stronger than, than the thing. And he wins that. So Miracle Man uh, is, um, 
is using incredible powers to show that he's more powerful than, than the you know, Fantastic Four. And during the comic series, Mr. Fantastic voices the fear that uh, if Miracle Man turns to evil, then everybody's going to be in trouble. And so sure enough, later in the, uh, in the, in the uh, comic, Miracle Man is, uh, declares war on humanity and steals a bunch of jewels. And so that's what you see often in comics, is that someone with great powers, then they use that for evil. And so, uh, and so, uh, and then the police call upon, uh, oh, uh, it says he basically uses his a giant monster, he had a prop, an inanimate monster, but he, he, he makes it come to life, and the monster helps him to, to steal the jewels. And so the police call him upon the Fantastic Four to stop him, uh, and then Miracle Man, so they have an encounter, Miracle Man uh, uses um, a series of, of powers, and at one point he hypnotizes Invisible Girl, who's another, you know, Invisible Girl Austin, yeah, another character. It hypnotizes invisible. I think I might start looking these up. Are they on just comics or on YouTube? Do you think? Uh, I just saw a movie one. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see the movie. Did you see the movie? Maybe, maybe we should we should watch the movie sometime. It's on Netflix. Uh, uh, it was like, like a long time ago. Long time ago. Yeah, so it's probably on YouTube. Uh, but actually, it's probably on Disney Plus, right? There's yeah, Disney. I should be. Yeah. But um, so. So Miracle Man hypnotizes Invisible Girl into obeying him, and uh, but then Human Torch uh, blinds him with a flare of fire, and he's captured, and his mysterious powers are explained as deriving from nothing more than hypnotism. And so always in the end, the, 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 the good guys win. So um, clearly that's a contrast with what we see here, which is the, the, the powers of that Peter is is uh, healing a paralyzed man, he's raising someone from the dead. It's, it's clearly not for his own ego. It's, it's, it's a demonstration of God's power. And we'll look, as we look at the passage more, more deeply, um, we're going to see, uh, see the, the reason for these miracles. And then I have to tell you one more story about a miracle man. It's amazing when you Google miracle man. Uh, so another one is a man, and I'll try to make this more brief, uh, but there was a man named Morris Goodman who became a, a wealthy insurance executive and, uh, and, he, and this is in the, in the uh, 1970s, and uh, so he had his own, uh, his own insurance company. And in 1981, in March, he decided he would, want, he would uh, uh, get a pilot's license, and he bought his own plane, a Cessna 172. And on March 10th, 1981, he was flying around Chesapeake Bay, which is in Virginia, and he had some engine trouble, and he tried to bring it into land at the uh, airport and the plane hit power lines and crashed. And so he ended up fracturing two major vertebrae, the C1 and C2 vertebrae, which left him fully paralyzed and really clinging to life. He couldn't breathe, he couldn't talk or swallow on his own. So he was put in the hospital. He could only communicate by blinking his eyes, so complete paralysis on a ventilator. And so he was treated in hospitals, um, and basically he could communicate only by blinking his eyes. and um, and then uh, he was transferred to a, a University of Virginia Medical Center after a week of intense practice uh, and using his uh, muscles. He was able to take breath without using a ventilator. And slowly uh, he was able to uh, speak. So his first word was mama after he regained a little bit of his. And then he, did, he worked hard and uh, it seemed like he received a lot of prayer, but that wasn't highlighted in what I read about him. And then he began to eat on his own. He began to walk again. He had to learn all this and a lot of physical therapy and um, he was able to get stronger. And on November 13th, so just over eight months after that accident, he was able to walk out of the hospital on his own. And so after that, he wrote a book. And the title of the book, of course, was Miracle Man. And he became a motivational speaker. So I looked him up on YouTube, and you can still tell, can still tell by his voice that you know that, that uh, he's he, he, had, he had lost his voice at one point. Uh, that, that you know that he had to teach himself to speak again. Uh, but he actually speaks at churches also. And he, uh, but he's you know an older man now. 
um, but he's spoken also to many large companies. And so his, he calls himself Miracle Man. So that title is is pretty you know, well known, but clearly, um, you know, it's different from the miracles that we see that Jesus Jesus did. And so this passage is is very important to look at the purpose of miracles and to be also if we're, if we're excited by those miracles by Miracle Man uh, in comics or by by this man Morris Goodman, we should be more excited about what what the Holy Spirit does, the power of the Holy Spirit. So. Uh, so when we look at the first one, uh, which was Aeneas is uh, healing from paralysis. So, uh, so that this is important to realize that this is in Judea. So we, we saw in Acts one, uh, the disciple, the apostle, was supposed to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. So already in Acts eight, Peter's been in Samaria. So. When we read about uh, Lydda and Joppa, this is in uh, Judea. And so it's a coastal region of uh, what's now Israel. Uh, and so, uh, so Peter is there. And uh, basically, when we look at the account, uh, he, he, there he found a man. So that's interesting. He's not just sitting, sitting at home and waiting. He is used searching for people that he can, he can bless uh, in the name of Jesus. And then he finds uh, the man who's, who's been in bed for eight years, who's paralyzed, and Peter says, uh, Jesus Christ heals you. So this is the big difference. He doesn't say, I heal you, or it's magic that heals you. Jesus has healed you. And Jesus has gone to heaven, of course, but the, so this is the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and he says, rise and make your bed. So, uh, and then he immediately rose. So one of the things that's interesting, you know, when I read Make Your Bed, I was curious. Why? What is that all about? So, uh, has anybody been to Japan before? Yeah? Did you sleep, did you sleep on a, what do you sleep on in Japan? In a traditional home. Futon. Yeah, futon. Do you sleep on a futon? Austin? Yeah, so what, why, why are the futons in Japan? There's not much space. Yeah, so when I was in Japan, and I, was, I, was in, I was in an apartment and with some friends, with a family, and you know, they don't have, there's no guest room, typically. And so uh, at, at night, uh, on the tatami, do you guys know tatami? It's kind of a soft flooring. Basically, you unroll a futon, uh, and that becomes the mattress. And so then you put a blanket on and you sleep. And it's pretty comfortable, actually. You would think it wasn't, but in, in the West, futons are used a lot now as, as sofas. It's a bed, but it's usually on a frame. But in Japan, it's on the floor, and it's for space. And so you sleep on the futon. And if you don't make, if you don't pick it up in the morning, what happens? You, you can trip over it, or you know, it takes up too much space. So the first thing you do when you get up is you need to roll up your futon and put it away. So that's, you know, when we say this, make your bed, I was thinking, wow, you know, that's, that's a, and my mom would be happy to hear that, right? Because that's what parents say. So, and it's interesting, when I was growing up, uh, my mom always, I shouldn't tell you this, but my mom always made my bed for me. <laughs> so my friends said, well, you're lucky, you know, so. Even even until I, I still lived at home until when I was at Santa Barbara City College until I was 20, my mom still made my bed. And so everybody would say, wow, you know, when, when you move out finally, you know, you're, what are you going to do? And, but it turns out, because my mom made my bed every, every morning, and she made it fast too, uh, until my, because she made it then, I, when I was with, when I was in a situation where, where you know, bed wasn't made. Uh, I couldn't sleep in an unmade bed. It had to be, it had to be already, it had to be made per, like a military almost, right? You want to have a perfectly made bed. And so, uh, when, uh, so, so I started making my bed immediately when I got up, when I was on my own. I think because that was, kind of, that was normal. So that was kind of when I read this, it was kind of interesting. And then, and then I, I uh, when I got married, my wife grew up without, without her mom making her bed. So what, what did that mean? Sometimes the bed would be unmade. And so that became an issue in our marriage a little bit. I shouldn't tell you this too, too, too much detail, but so you know, 
so sometimes, for a while, I said, well, I'm just going to make my half of the bed. So that was kind of strange, right? So I made my half and then her half. But that doesn't work too well because it's sort of a... And then, then, she, then, but then she changed. And so she, you know, when I started making all the bed, and she, she got used to it. So now, if I'm not home, if I'm traveling or something, she makes the bed. And um, so, so it's, it's, like a, it's like a habit more than anything. And um, even when, um, sometimes, she'll get up and, and, uh, and then, uh, and I'll get up a little bit later, and then, uh, but maybe she was just going downstairs to feed the cat or something like that. And so when she comes back, the bed's already made. So she gets a little bit disappointed. But anyway, so that's a little bit of a digression. But, but, I, think, but th I think this is, the, and culturally, um, it seemed like it was a mat on the floor. It was not like one of our Western beds. So, that, so that's why he said, make your bed, because it would have ruined the miracle if you got up and then tripped over the, the mat, the futon, and, and, and uh, broke his leg. So that, that's just kind of, that's just something that the Bible is practical, and uh, when you look in detail, so this is the this is the miracle that Peter did, uh, and immediately, and Peter says Jesus Christ has made you well, uh, and then and the result was uh, is the other thing that the result of a miracle should be to focus on God and to grow the church, and so it says all the residents of Lydda and Sharon, which is again this is this is Judea. Uh, saw him, basically saw him do the miracle, and they turned to the Lord. And so the they means all the residents. So that's called a movement, a church planning movement that happened because of that miracle. If Peter had found this man and healed him, then the church wouldn't have started there. Okay, so now we get to uh, the second passage, which is even more dramatic, more of a miracle. Which is, uh, which is the dead person. Uh, so uh, when we look at verse 36, uh, it moves on to Joppa, which is uh, also near Lydda. And it seemed like the, the Christians in Joppa heard that Peter was in the area and sent for him immediately. And so uh, it's interesting because up to this point in Acts, there hasn't been any raising of the dead by, by the uh, apostles. So some people may, might have think that, thought that when Jesus uh, resurrected, when he went to heaven, then, then there would be no raising of the dead. Uh, so they were sent uh, for Peter, it says later. Uh, so Tabitha uh, has died. Uh, and she was a good person, uh, de devoted. And uh, since Lydda was near Joppa, it says in verse uh, 38, the disciples, the followers there, Christians there, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men for urging him, please come to us without delay. So we're going to see this pattern in the book of Acts. Uh, there's a desire to, uh, basically to, uh, to have uh, someone who is possessed by the Holy Spirit uh, to, to do that. To, to use the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and uh, sometimes we think that apostles uh, are people that tell, tell us what to do. You know, they give us commands and do this and do this and do this. Uh, but it's interesting, you know, uh, Peter is, in this case, many times in the book of Acts, uh, the apostles often do what people tell them. So just think about that. I mean, how many... How many of us like it when somebody tells us to do something? And so, if, they, if someone says, "Come," you know, if I'm in the middle of something, and, um, and someone said, "Like, uh, I've just got home," or "I got <laughs> this day and age, I'm always home." So, if, some, if I'm on a yesterday, I had uh, I had a six-hour Zoom retreat. So, 8:30 in the morning, that I organized too, by the way, for our local uh, team members. 8:30. Uh, basically to 3.30 with a short lunch break. I was, I was on Zoom, and then I had, and then uh, I was off for about 45 minutes, and I had a Zoom meeting with a, with a family in China that I, that I know that had, had used to be at Caltech, and they've returned to China. 
And, and so my wife said, uh, can you uh, can you help? With, I won't say what it is. Can you help with something? And I basically said, um, selfishly, that I'm tired. I, 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 I had Zoom fatigue. And so, uh, but see, that was selfish. Uh, yeah. And you think, and if we put, we put ourselves in the disciples' shoes and the apostles' shoes, um, you know, Peter was being summoned to another place. And so, but, but his purpose was bigger. His purpose was to be an instrument of God. And we, we learned about, about Paul, he's going to be a chosen instrument. And so Peter knows that he's an instrument of God. And so I have to realize that in my own life, that I need to be an instrument of God. And so uh, when, when it's inconvenient or when I have Zoom fatigue, if, if, if someone's asking me to help them or to do something, I need to say yes. And so, uh, so that, that's a good message for us here, is that the, you know, the, the, in this case, uh, Peter is being summoned to Joppa uh, by, by disciples, and so he's available. So part of, sometimes we say in, in you know, ministry, uh, you know, half the battle is just showing up. If we show up and we are, we are ambassadors for Christ, then God will use us. So that's part of the, part of the challenge. Um, and so, um, when we look at the story of, uh, of Joppa, uh, so we know that Joppa, it was 11 miles away, so it wasn't, it wasn't as if uh, Peter could jump in his car or call an Uber, right? He had to walk 11 miles uh, from, uh, from uh, Lida to Joppa. It was a port city. Uh, just south of what's now Tel Aviv, and it has a long history. So we can look at the archaeology and find that, that, uh, that uh, uh, there's evidence of first century residences. So this is you know, 2,000 years ago, a historical fact that there was a thriving city there. And, um, and then we look at, in verse 38, um, the disciples. Now you don't know how they heard, but this is this is the power of the word of mouth. You know, it wasn't on Twitter or Instagram or you know this. Is, so you would think you know the um, Miracle Man in the comics would post his feats on on uh, on Instagram, right? Just like we folk, we post food on Instagram. We take a meal, uh, we eat a meal, we take a picture, and then we post it. And so the, the, you would think the disciples would. would Tempted to do a miracle, take a picture, and then post it. That does, you know, that's that doesn't happen. Um, and so the uh, the summons goes out to Peter, and uh, but it's clear that the disciples have faith. They have faith in the power of God. And so uh, and then Peter comes and. Uh, Peter didn't have, he didn't claim that he had miracles. Uh, he claims that the, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, he knew by faith that Tabitha would be restored to life. Uh, and when we look at verse 41, this idea of being raised up, uh, it says, Tabitha, arise. She opened her eyes, uh, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Uh, and so the Greek verb that's used for raising uh, throughout the New Testament uh, is the same Greek word uh, and a stemi that is used for Jesus' resurrection. So when Jesus rose from the dead, it's exactly and when it was, was resurrected on Easter morning, um, it is the same Greek word. And so when, when, uh, when Peter says, Tabitha, rise, that's exactly uh, what by Jesus rising from the dead, um, and so uh, and, and so she rises up. Uh, and he gives her his hand and and helps her. Well, so that's it. so is that that's the hand of God. So that's what we use when we help people. We're extending the hand of God uh, to help because with the power of the Holy Spirit. And then uh, calling the saints and the widows, he presented her alive. So again, he's giving testimony not to himself but to the power of Jesus. Uh, and again, just like in 
Lida uh, became known to uh, all Java, and again, this is before uh, Instagram or, or Facebook. Uh, I, I just joined a new uh, Facebook group uh, called, uh, called Birdie California. My wife and I have started to be like bird life. Why don't you ask me? You said? Not really? Or Albert, you like bird watching? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, when I grew up, yeah, growing up, I, um, I, you know, with single mom, my mom wanted us to do activities, so we joined the Audubon Society, which is which is basically for uh, those that love birds. And she would take us, my brother and sister and me, and then a friend on uh, a uh, bird watching trip. So you, you have binoculars and you walk around and you identify birds. And, um, and so, uh, so my, uh, and, and I still like birds, and I can identify them. I have I have a good memory. So if I see, like if I saw in the parking lot uh, a hawk, I could tell you what kind of hawk it was. Yeah. And then, uh, and also, especially ocean birds, ducks and geese, I can tell what kind they are. So, um, so I so I take my wife bird watching. We now we go down to Bolsa Chica in, in uh, Huntington Beach. There's a there's a Bolsa Chica Beach, but also inland there's a it's called estuary. There's a water water there, and so we look we look at birds. And right now in the winter, there are a lot of birds because they migrate from up north. And so uh, last time we were there, we saw a bunch of people with with these huge telephoto lenses taking taking pictures. And I said, "Wow, you know, I wonder what, what that is." So I found on Facebook there's a group called Birdie California, and so people post the post the pictures there. If they don't recognize what type of bird it is, they'll say, "You know, what is this?" And then a bunch of people will respond and say this is such and such. And so that's pretty cool. And so it's kind of adding a new dimension. So, um, the clear, you know, uh, so it's kind of making the, and if there's a rare bird, sometimes I'll, I'll go on there and there's a picture of a bird that, that uh, is from Russia. Yeah, and so, so when that happens, then people flock you know, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to see it. Because many serious bird watchers keep what's called a life list. So they see how many different species of bird they can see in their life. So they'll travel uh, halfway around the world to see birds that will add to their life list. And so that's so the, so it's made known though, it's so much easier now because of it's face business of Facebook group. And there's a website called ebird.org. So anyway, I, what I'm saying that is is it's a lot easier now to make things known. So if you think if, if Facebook and Instagram had been around during this time, uh, you know, you what would what would Peter have posted? Right? He would have taken a picture before a picture when, when Tabitha was was dead, right? And then and then maybe video, right, of her of her rising. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then posted it. But what would he have said? No, you wouldn't have been say you would have said, I'm the miracle man. You would say this is this is the power of God. God has healed her, not me. So you, you think about the post that you would have done. And uh, but even and, and I think, but I think word of mouth is better because people would say this is what God has done. And it seemed like because of what happened, it became known to it all Joppa and many believed in the Lord. And so that was a that was a very important uh, instant when when the reason and the power of the Holy Spirit was made known. And, uh, and, then, he, and then it said, he stayed in Joppa uh, yeah, for many days with Simon and Tanner. And that's verse 43. And so when we compare this uh, with, with the account that we read earlier, um, it, was, it was not necessarily the faith of, of, of Tabitha, because she was dead. Right? Dead people can't express faith. With the faith of her, her friends. They believed that Peter uh, could heal her through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that's important. You know, during this you know, time of, of COVID, you know, while we're waiting, you know, we, we, we went for the vaccine. Right? We don't want to be just sitting around and, uh, and not doing anything, even though it's so tempting when we're at home all the time. right? We may get distracted by, by going down to the refrigerator or, or uh, petting the cat or something like that. Uh, but we have to make sure that we are available uh, to, uh, to help people. And sometimes the help is just reaching out 
uh, with a text message or, or, or inviting someone. Instead of inviting someone to my house now, I invite them to my Zoom room. So I, I can meet with people. I, Zoom meetings are very draining. Do you agree with that? Like a class, it's just, you know, it's hard to keep going, like, like a six hour meeting. But, but what I found is when I'm in a small group of like two or three people, then it's, it's really good. So one of my Cal State LA classes, uh, I think I've told you I'm, I'm taking uh, master's classes at Cal State LA in education. And so two of my classes uh, have the same professor, and a lot some of the students are the same, but most of the class, and this meets once a week for an hour and 45 minutes usually, and most of the class is split up into breakout rooms. And it's supposed to be random, but somehow I end up with some of the same people in each class, and, or in, in the breakout rooms. And so uh, what's happened is now after 15 weeks of the semester, I can't believe there's only two weeks left, same with, yeah, Cal Poly. It goes a week later, right there. No, you're you're graduating. <laughs> well, that's a good reason. <laughs> ben, it seems like you were at, uh, you were a student forever, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you transferring, Ethan? So after this year, I'm, I'm applying for the one more. Uh, I'm applying for next fall. To which school? The Cal Poly's. Yeah. Yeah. My one of my daughters is. Uh, Helping her with the application to Cal State LA for next next uh, next fall. It's due December fourth, right? December seventh, December second, or the fourth. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget. Um, anyway, so um, so in the Zoom rooms, I'm getting to know my classmates. So there's one student from Australia. So she's you know so it's the next day in Australia, but she seems to end up in my my group, and so uh, it's interesting when uh, the facilitator of the group is. Uh, is important. Uh, in many, many cultures, people don't speak until they're called upon. So, uh, so my professor will say, the facilitator is the one who can speak the most languages, or the facilitator is the one who got the most sleep last night, and you know, things like that. And so I end up being a facilitator, and it's really been interesting to kind of, kind of minister to my classmates with using Zoom. And, you know, I can ask them, I don't necessarily follow the discussion questions, right? But I'm asking them questions, you know, how are you doing? And, and so we've developed friendships uh, th just by being in the same breakout rooms. And one of the students uh, is a, uh, is, is a, loves math, and so I've actually invited her to help, help tutor at the school because she's looking for opportunities to, to, uh, to volunteer. You know? so, that's, so it's interesting. Uh, even in Zoom, we can, we can build friendships and we can minister the power of the Holy Spirit. We can, we can display the, uh, the, the uh, characteristics of true love. I, I, I got to pray this every morning. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. How can we be good and kind even with Zoom? And, and it's, it's doable if we have the power of the Holy Spirit. So one, big, one of the... Um, classmates last week said, wow, you're a really good facilitator. You know, so I don't, you know, that was interesting because that was not me, it was the Holy Spirit working in me displaying those qualities. It's not, not everybody has that. So anyway, that's, uh, so what we, I think the big picture, the lesson from this, uh, these two miracles is that Peter was available, that he went, he did to sit at home. He just didn't sit on, what, you know, big, big Zoom meetings. He was on it was out, and when people asked him to help, he did it. He wasn't selfish. So that's uh, and, and so the power of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, is evident in his life, obviously. So dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you teach us uh, through the Book of Acts. Especially, we thank you for the opportunity to learn from Peter's faithfulness. Uh, we thank you for the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit. We pray for each of us that we'll be able to embody characteristics of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you love us. You reach out to us.